All right, we're back. Fight fans, Akin Barak, Sirius XM, Fight Nation, The Zone. Special guest on the line, friend to the room. We don't say that about everybody. We've been riding with this dude from the beginning. Brooklyn's own, the miracle man, Daniel Jacobs, on the line with us. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, Listen, uh, a lot has happened since we last spoke. You know, pandemic, coronavirus, lockdown. Um, I know you're living in Atlanta somewhere, enjoying the fruits of your labor. Um, How is it getting back into this fight mode and fight spirit? Because, you know, a lot of fighters are out of shape during this pandemic. (laughs) Uh, It's just, to me, it's exciting because obviously being out of sport and being out of gyms, you know, it's kind of one of those situations where you just miss the atmosphere, miss the environment. So I'm grateful to be getting back into my comfort zone. Obviously, everybody misses the ring, so um, that's inevitable. Uh, getting back into the ring is, for me, fans and no fans, uh, I just want to get back to fight. So I think as far as staying active or staying fit during this whole pandemic, I've been able to do as best as I can, and I'm looking forward to uh, being total tip-top shape uh, for November, my bout uh, November 27th. Danny, I've never seen you out of shape, Danny. I mean, yeah. yeah, you might not be in boxing shape, but sure, I've sure. never seen a fat Daniel Jacobs ever. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, uh, well, I don't, you know, I love to find dime, but I don't, you know, I don't crazy with the foods, you know? Um, I stay active. Um, Atlanta, there's a lot of walking, there's a lot of trails, there's a lot of things and activities to do. So, you know, I just find my ways just to stay shape if I'm not actually just boxing, but... Like I said, my son, my family, everything that's been going on, I've just been trying to stay in the best shape that I can, yes. but at the same time, stay safe. Now, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you hear this guy from Brownsville? Did you hear this guy <laughs> say, I love to find dime? <laughs> this kid from Brownsville said, I love to find dime. Yes, I Listen, do. man, uh, um, just as you grow up somewhere, man, you don't have to keep eating, you know, Kennedy fried chicken, man. I know we're fine dining this, so I feel like I had that, that today. But um, listen, how, how all right, I want to get to this fight with, with, with Gabe Rosado. Um, how bad is the blood between you guys, and why has it gotten to this point? I won't say it's bad blood to where if we see each other on the streets, it'll be beef and a problem. I don't, I don't never think any professional fighter should take it to that level, but I do think from a competitive standpoint and from uh, a standpoint of just fighters in general putting all that they have on the line and some making it, some not. And I just think that he's felt some type of way over the years of my success. Um, And he's been very vocal about it in terms of what he think I should be doing or how I've had the easy road or whatever the case may be. So I just think in boxing, you're always going to have your competitive fights um, and then you're going to have your personal battles that you yourself want to get out the way. And I think that this is a perfect fight for me, obviously coming out of this pandemic. Um, I don't think any, you know, everyone's tries their best to stay in shape, but no one has really been active. So mm-hmm. I just think that this is the perfect fight for me. Uh, bad blood, uh, competitive fight, uh, fight for true boxing fans. Um, if they know anything about Gabe Rosado, if they know anything about me, then they know that this is going to be, regardless to um, what he's ranked or what fans view of him as a fighter, you know, Gabe comes to fight. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking for that competition, and I'm looking forward to letting him know why I am where I am. And it is not through an undeserved circumstance, but it's because I've obtained everything that I wanted to through hard work, dedication, and sacrifices. Well, in a, in a nice way, you just said that Gabe is jealous, basically. Um, <laughs> so much, yeah. can you bring us back to the exact point where all of this started, where I don't know if you read something online or he was walking by and whispered something, but the exact I, point. Yeah. I think it was a time that, uh, you know, me and Jamal Charlo had some, some differences and, you know, we had our altercation and now, uh, confrontations in the hallway yes i've voiced my opinion on the situation and i thought he might have thought i handled it wrong um i mean when you got when you got problems with somebody 
you know, for there's no right or wrong way to go about it, especially when you're fighters. So I thought he might have got jealous of me bringing up the money situation, but me bringing up and it's like such a a, a, a international quote now. Like, you're not touching M's, like you know what yeah. I'm saying. Like <laughs> my whole point was that I wasn't ducking Jamal Charlo yes. to go to HBO. I was going to HBO to obtain. Uh, uh, things that I've always dreamed of, you know, opportunities, uh, financial gain, exposure, notoriety, all those things that, you know, came with that package. And that's why I went to HBO. So when I voiced that to Jamal, I felt like he thought I handled it wrong and wasn't talking about boxing, but was talking about money. But that's not where I stand. I'm not like a materialistic guy where I talk about what I got. You know, you don't never see anything that or, or you might see me look nice in terms yeah, you, of how you, I you, present myself. You, you let the watch Brooklyn. talk for you, like Jay-Z said. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I'm just, <laughs> you know, I'm a humble guy, but at the same time, it's just some things you just, you can't tolerate, you know, coming from another man. Now, uh, speaking of Jamal Charlo, which you just brought up, um, what's your take on his last victory against Dervichenko? And um, even though you moved up to 168, do you think that, there's possibility for that fight still to happen at some point in the future against you and Jamal. Oh, 100 percent. Oh, 100 percent. I have my eyes not overlooking uh, Gabe Rosado, but I have my eyes on the likes of the Charlo, uh, Jamal Charlo. Um, I won't even say anybody else's name. Yeah, I do. I want to mm -hmm. fight him. And mm -hmm. if it's in my near future, that's what we're going to go for. But it's really about what really, really, really the fans want and let me get this little knucklehead out the way i know everybody too you know too hyped about this one but it's still going to be a competitive fight yeah i want to see it i'm looking forward to yeah. seeing it now now is there, Rice, is Philly there, versus Brooklyn. yeah exactly would you go would you consider going back down to 160 to fight jamal charles if the opportunity came um i think um hearing hearing things as far as charlo wanting to move up or oh, okay. it being a possibility of him moving up. I don't even see why we couldn't do it at 68 or meet in the middle. Catch right, yeah. But if we want it to be a competitive fight, a fight for the fans, I want to do it to where we both are comfortable. I don't want to take him out of the circumstances that he's not comfortable and vice versa. So, you know, let's just do it to the best of our ability and make the best man win. All right, well, speaking about being comfortable, yeah. if, you was, if the Canelo fight was at 168, do you think the outcome would have been different? I do. 100%, but I hate to dispute it because then I sound bitter. But I know how I felt in that fight. I know how I felt during training in the last part where I had to cut the weight. I mean, it, it was a lot. I mean, I got fined a million dollars because, you know, after we were supposed to have another weigh-in um, the next day, I just said, this is just too much on my body. You know, I ate, you know, one little salad and gained five pounds off that, five, off that salad. So it was just like, what do I do? Do I lose the weight? and still be even more weak or do I just ride it out and, and, and you know, deal with the fumes that I have and the gas that I have? Cause it wasn't a lot, but yeah. I do think circumstances will be better. But my focus right now is to make sure that I can put myself in a position to claim or to, 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 to ask for a fight or to even let it be a fan thing that they request. But right. you know, I, you know, I was, I don't want to be bitter too bitter about it, but at the same time, I, I think, a lot of people know I was put in unfair circumstances and I did the best that I can do with those crazy circumstances. Well, yeah, you know, to you, to I, don't, your... I don't think you sound bitter. Is I asked you a question. I brought it out yeah. of you. I think sure, the bitter sure. people are the ones that volunteer all of this info because <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure that, they and, feel and, hurt. And, you know, and to your defense, you know, uh, watching you against Cesar, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., it, it, it was a huge difference in the pop yeah. in your punches, the speed, sure, how strong sure. you looked in the ring. So it was evident, you know, for those who who study the sport where you're way more comfortable at 168 pounds. Sure, sure. Now, speaking of 168, you know, there are guys in that division that pop a lot of smack, right? You know, I mean, I guess if they're champions deserving, you know, you got Caleb Plants of the world, the, the David Benavidez, uh, you're, you know, you're such a big name at 160. Even though you're 168 and not a champion, you're still in the mix. You, you can fight any of those fighters, and it'll be a big fight, their biggest fight, 100%. right? 100%. So, um, how do you feel about Caleb Plant and the smack that he's talked? Uh, and I, I'm not sure if you and Benavidez had words on social media or anything like that. When can those fights possibly happen? 
uh, those fights are possible for next year as well. Uh, me campaigning at 68. Um, like I said, uh, first time around, I wanted to get acclimated, but I fought a cruiserweight instead in Chavez. So, <laughs> you know, this fight for me is just a perfect fight just to get and get it out the way and truly be ready for this division and the guys that's in it. Uh, the talent's there, you know, just want to make sure that you know, everything is right comfortably. Ain't no rush in this career. I still am very young, um, in my prime, and um, I got some good years ahead of me, uh, some of the best that you've seen thus far. So I'm looking forward to displaying that in a comfortable position. Well, Daniel, you, you posted a picture of you and a young lady, and you said <laughs> wedding vibes with this one. And everybody in the in the post uh, in the comment section was saying congratulations, and I'm like, that don't sound like he just said he got married. I mean, <laughs> oh no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get married. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. But everybody was congratulating you. Is it because uh, of the woman? Probably because the word, or? probably because of the wording. But I was at a wedding um, for a good friend of mine, and she was in Dallas, and uh, you know, I just was letting it known who what? I was accompanying the wedding with. No but, doubt. And that's which what I is, thought which too, but everybody was congratulating you. And what were you yes. thinking when you saw all those congratulations? People can take things. And, and like, <laughs> I, mean, I guess I must have worded it wrong, but I probably should have worded it a little bit better. But, yeah. you know, it's just one of those things. Yeah. So right. your love love life is going good, though. Seems like from social my, media. My life, my life in general is oh, going right. good. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right, right. life is blissful for me. Like, I wake up every day. Like, I'm just like how can I conquer the world now? And I don't feel like there's anything that I can't accomplish, you know? Wow. Right, right. Yeah. Are, are you okay with um, fighting with no spectators? And, uh, you know, do you think it'll affect you in any way? I don't think it'll affect me, absolutely. No, I feel like for me, it'll be uncomfortable just in my mind. But going out there, once that bell rings, it'll just be like I'm in the gym in a hard sparring session. You know, somebody another rival from somewhere in Queens or the Bronx come to Brooklyn and, you know, we're fighting in the gym and it's like a real battle versus, you know, Burroughs. It's, to me, that's how it would feel. Um, but it's no different from me putting my best effort in. And that's what I'm looking forward to doing. So, Daniel, you beat cancer. You're a two-time champ. You're rich. How many more fights you got in you? Um, as a, a, enough for my body to, like, I don't want to be on my last strings. Like, I don't want it to be evident that, okay, yeah, like, you know, he's two, three fights past his prime. Like, nah, it's not going to get to that point. You know, I, ha I have a lot of things to live for. Uh, I want to be able to go on and do so many other things in my life. Um, boxing has served as so many great things in my life. But, you know, there is a future for me outside of boxing. And I want to have a head, my head all together once I retire. But... Who knows how many fights right. I have left? I won't limit myself, but I also won't, you know, say right. there's a whole bunch. Now, right. when you do, and Danny, Daniel Jacobs on the line with us, uh, when you do decide to retire and move on, talk a little bit about some of those things that you want to accomplish or you want to do. What What is Daniel Jacobs going to get into post boxing? Well, I mean, I'm very, very below the radar, super not on the scene. Like you would never see me in any type of craziness but i felt like you know i maybe need to expose myself a little bit more to be able to create the change that i want within my life and within the world um i really feel like i have an amazing story that i can touch so many different people but i kind of have to expose myself a little bit for that to happen and in terms of business i mean that's that's already an investment that i've made so you know i don't think i'll ever have a worry for uh, finances. I just think that it will be what brings me happiness after that point. And obviously, you know, I've experienced everything that I want as a, as a man, as a fighter in my career. It will just be about helping others and letting others see their potential or reaching their goals. Well, I mean, we're looking forward to that, man. Look, you look happy. I love it that you're happy and, and keep that keep that energy. I'm looking forward to seeing, <laughs> looking forward to seeing that fight. Yeah. I didn't want I didn't want to pry too much into your personal life because you're a friend. So I so I let everything slide. Um, no, I respect but, it. Thank you. But um, he, uh, he, he didn't want you to beat him up neither. And there's something <laughs> different about you. I don't know when you smile. I can't put my finger. <laughs> something so, different. There's some good. icy yeah, punch. Just, yeah, I did it yeah. myself. So all right, listen, Danny. Good luck uh, against Rosado, man. Looking forward to Thank that you. showdown and you getting shaking the uh, you know the rust off. And uh, you and your Indeed. family stay safe, man. Good to see you, Dan. Thanks, guys.